All of us know that the most important assets of a company don't show up on the balance sheet, but it has been incredibly hard to try to assess what the intangibles of a company are and how valuable they are and how do we measure them. Our last presenter in this session is Daniel Rock, a doctoral student here at the school who is tackling that nasty question. Sandy. So I really wanted to talk to you guys about a brand new business model I came up with, but that proved too difficult. So I'm going to talk to you about macroeconomics instead. Um, this is joint work with Eric Brynjolfsson and Shin Kyu Yang with a special shout out to Christian Umbach for uh, some really great research assistance. Um, essentially, we're asking one of the most essential questions that you can in macro, which is how is productivity growing? and how might we be measuring it incorrectly. So that is the point of growth accounting. Um, not going, oh, there we go. Okay, so there's been this debate recently. Uh, is productivity really declining? And when I say productivity, I mean outputs GDP per unit of inputs. Um, you know, there's many versions of this. There's labor productivity, which is what I'm not necessarily talking about. But this is all things considered, capital, technology, and people as well. There's been a debate. Um, recently, people have been saying that we're in this secular decline of productivity growth. Uh, meanwhile, people in Silicon Valley are saying that there's no way that's true. Um, we're making all sorts of cool new stuff every day. Um, this, these aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, but to say that productivity is declining before we're sure that we're measuring it properly uh, is perhaps a little bit premature. So we're, our work discusses a little bit of the way that we might uh, correct for um, some of the mismeasurement in productivity. Uh, this is something that's been going on. Academics are talking about it. Newspapers are talking about it. Blogs are talking about it. So it's really a good thing to uh, investigate. So as I said, productivity output, which we're going to conceptualize as GDP because we're looking at things at the whole economy level or the industry level, um, not necessarily the firm level, uh, per unit of capital, labor, technology, things like that. So Typically, the mismeasurement argument goes that uh, things like smartphones and the value of smartphones are not properly measured. You might have paid $400 for your smartphone, but you, I bet if I were to tell you I'm going to take it away unless you pay me, you'd be willing to give me a little bit more. Um, that's not what we're talking about here. Again, um, that's a perfectly legitimate argument. But what we're going to be talking about instead is uh, intangible capital. So if you buy a dollar of computers, or in this case, you know, maybe $100 of computers and you put that in your organization, it might take you $900 more to make that a productive asset in your company. You need to re-engineer your business processes, you need to train your workers, you need to get that computer off the loading dock and actually into your, uh, your company. So those things, um, the statistics don't necessarily pick those up properly. Uh, fortunately for us, the, the market does. As you all know, it's very difficult to make money in the stock market. Um, economic profits are captured there. So we can use that information to get at this intangible dark matter that's being created in the economy and then re-estimate GDP using that uh, IT-related uh, correlated intangible asset. Okay, so like I said, we measure this already. You buy a, you know, a pallet of Dell computers that's sitting on your loading dock. You tell the government, hey, we spent a lot on technology. Um, that's great, and that's been incorporated. But by the time it's in your organization, it looks like this. It's a bunch of screens. People are doing all sorts of cool things with the work. They were trained. There was a business process taking what they're producing and what they're getting to make production uh, and turning that into money. And this part can actually be a much bigger component uh, than the original spending on computers, especially as prices have kind of tanked on uh, computing and stuff like that. So a little bit of um, how we're going to go through it. Uh, first, I'll show you how uh, the economy is typically measured and kind of what a picture of the macro economy looks like under the old paradigm. Then I'll show you how we're adjusting to accommodate intangibles and intangible growth um, and what the economy looks like under that paradigm. And then uh, we'll look at some industry dynamics and talk about that a little bit afterward. Uh, a little bit of a caveat on the industry dynamics. The BEA says don't trust our industry level data as much as you trust the uh, overall stuff. It's um, so, you know, uh, I'm not responsible for any questions you might have about data there, uh, but if you aggregate up, the, the picture is pretty good. Um, so a little unavoidable to have some math up here, but uh, the general thing I want to talk about, this is called a solo model. So we can observe what you've produced. We can see what you have in terms of output uh, and GDP and the value of that. 
and we can see what you put in, how many people you hired, how much you spent on labor, uh, how much you spent on uh, different types of capital. Maybe that's buildings or forklifts or computers, whatever it happens to be. Um, when we take the growth and what you put in, just scaling up, and we subtract that out from what you grew in terms of your business, what we're left with is this residual or question mark. Um, that's called productivity growth. Um, that is a residual in the, the equation. So when we take the observables and remove them, that's what we're measuring when we talk about productivity growth, and it is a delta. So looking at how the economy um, has evolved over the last 30 years, uh, first I'll direct your attention to the, the left-hand side graph. Um, that pl plots the share of output that capital and labor have. And you can see that the share that labor's had over the last 30 years has declined, and capital has gained that share. Um, on the right-hand side, though, you see in the top purple line, value-added growing, and this is indexed to 1988 being 100. Um, value-added has grown quite steadily, um, nearly 3x. Productivity growth, the blue line, has grown about 2x. And the number of full-time employees employed is only about one and a quarter x. So to some extent, labor is not picking up um, the, the same gains that value-added is. This is to some extent a story about uh, labor productivity there. Um, that's not necessarily the, the full thing going on. And then in the, the bottom side, we have this, uh, this residual and um, the growth rates in these things reflected in the levels in the top right. I'd like to point out here that the people who got, or the, the group that got hurt the worst was the employees, because that's a flexible input. Um, so when, you can, when you're in bad times, you can fire people more easily than you can you know, get rid of your machines that you own. So, Let's go through the logic of how we might correct uh, productivity to include these intangible assets. Um, first, every dollar of IT, as I've mentioned, has a lot of necessitated complementary investments that you need to put into your business to get it to work. Things like training, you maybe hire a consulting firm to teach your uh, new employees how to code in R or Python. Um, you have to install the stuff, uh, you have to get the computers working in a network, um, other kinds of adjustment costs. You might have to, as Deborah mentioned, re-engineer your business to think about uh, how digital components can be more important. Um, now, why isn't that counted, you might ask? Well, most of the time, those sorts of investments are expensed, and they vanish. They're not on the balance sheet. They're counted once. Someone gets that income, and that's it. Um, really, they should be capitalized, because that's something that's generating a yield in your business. Your competitors can see what you're putting into your business. Your competitors can see what's coming out. But in order for, that, for me to say, tomorrow I want all of Walmart available to me, that would be like infinitely costly, right? So, but you might say, if I want Walmart as it is today, but you know, within the next 200 years or so, that might be actually kind of feasible, which is you know, kind of a weird thing to think about. But that difference between how long your competitors can, will take to catch up to you and how long you've got this asset ex post will be a, a rent that the market will pick up. And that should be added to GDP. Um, so the way that we represent that is as a multiplier. I spend a dollar on IT capital. I bought $100 of Dell computers. Um, I can get another $9 or $900 of value out of that. Um, or I'd need to invest another $900 of value in that. Um, and the government statistics don't pick that up, but certainly the market does. So here's, uh, we revise the technical details. The only change here is that we've moved from uh, the pure capital and pure labor inputs to this one minus lambda over z term. And that's just going to be the multiplier. But typically, because that lambda over z is quite a bit larger than one, that's a negative term. So with everything else fixed, if you're, doing a, if you're pulling a drag on the kind of growth that you can measure, the only thing that can go up to compensate for that is that residual term, that question mark, um, you know, kind of the, the special sauce in the economy. So looking first here uh, at, the, at the right side, we don't know what that multiplier is just yet. I'll show you some estimates for it. But looking at the right side, here's trying a bunch of different values to see what it looks like. Um, that black line on the right, uh, starting at 100, is the baseline level of productivity that I showed you earlier. If you put a multiplier of 10x on the IT capital, you get uh, the red line on top, which corresponds to about 55 basis points of additional productivity growth every year that has gone unmeasured. So, you see that big split out is that's pure uh, business process reengineering and adjustment costs that aren't being measured. And additionally, to claim that productivity growth is declining, well, on the left hand side, you can see productivity growth. Maybe that's true uh, or easier to see with the black line, but you can see how much whippier it is when uh, we add in this uh, multiplier. 
So the best times are great, but in the worst times, you're not investing in those things like training. So it's kind of hard to say with so much noise that for sure productivity growth is, uh, is declining, at least from this data. So how do we get that shadow capital? Well, we regress market value on the stated values of these different assets, and that includes things like buildings. You don't want to omit those variables. And uh, when Eric and Shinkyu did this in 1999, they found uh, under a variety of specifications that that multiplier can be, be between 5.6 and 20.3. So for every dollar of computing capital you bought, you probably invested at least another 4.6 or maybe even $19 to, to get that productive. Um, I also note that for buildings, that coefficient is about one. So you don't really get that much extra return from uh, a building. There's not as much intangible. So I would be remiss at MIT if I didn't discuss what you know, some engineering uh, productivity gains are, are out there. So let's look at chemical products. Um, we've got a, a major uh, decline in the number of full-time employees, and you can see that in the top left. Nevertheless, value added continues to grow steadily, and uh, you know, IT is kind of a mixed story. We had a, a big accumulation period, and then it kind of is wavering. Recently, there's been more IT accumulation. Um, and when we look at the productivity of this particular industry, uh, there is a little bit of separation. We have about 10% uh, you know, more productivity growth over 30 years in this industry, which is encouraging. If you look at publishing and software, which is a little bit weirder, um, we have the, the dot-com boom and bust, which leads to a lot of people getting and then losing jobs subsequently. But value-added and IT stock accumulation continues. Um, and this one is really one of your, your noisiest industries. Uh, you know, for sure, this is not, uh, not that surprising. But um, the bad times for the IT industry was, were particularly bad because of what they, the, if we assume that this multiplier is in there, it's, it's adding some negative noise over the last 10 years. Um, retail is a little bit more of an optimistic story. Employment's growing, value added's growing, IT stock is growing, and lo and behold, productivity is also increasing at a faster rate than we expected. Um, so the last thing I'll say is that the productivity frontier here, uh, the people generating these gains, are not necessarily localized in one industry. Um, Chad Syverson at UChicago talked about uh, how ICT um, being, having a lot of this digital dark matter isn't enough to explain the productivity gap when people talk about mismeasurement. But really to think that ICT is the only place that digital dark matter or IT dark matter can exist um, is kind of a little bit short-sighted here because you know, if you look at this graph, this says net income per employee of different firms in different industries. Across every industry, there are one or two firms who absolutely kill it on the productivity side and the profitability side. So understanding what they're doing, I mean, IT is one of the, uh, one of the f industries with more of these firms, as is finance. Um, but you know, industrials also have these firms that are doing really well. Um, so the evidence is that some firms, some very special firms, are driving a lot of the gains uh, in productivity. So in conclusion, you know, to circle back to that, that puzzle, um, productivity may be slowing down. It seems like it's a little bit noisier. Um, but whether or not we're looking at this productivity slowdown right now, we should really be including this IT shadow value to decide, and the market can give us that information. Um, depending on the multiplier you use, uh, it's about 25 to 55 basis points a year despite the fact that there's tremendous heterogeneity across industries. Um, so the next steps are to, to figure out where this accumulation is happening, uh, which firms are at the frontier, and why. Um, so that's uh, what I hope to spend the next couple of years working on. Thank you. Great talk, thank you. So I was wondering what is about the non-equilibrium effect so that right now we're seeing a lot of industries having to invest more, let's say, in digital marketing. And mm -hmm. it's, and it's an accelerating thing. And you need to have, let's say, nine months or two years to take the dollars that you invest in your computing systems, plus the training, plus the learning, et cetera, in order to really ramp up the productivity. So I was wondering what time lag considerations have you put in there? Well, that's very interesting. Um, you know, time lags, there is definitely evidence that there, of this time lag effect. Uh, what I'll say is that the market is usually wise to the time lag. So I'm going to trust that the market can figure out, OK, your, your gains are coming in two years, uh, and, and price them accordingly um, to get that, that multiplier. Uh, 